Hey all, Scott here. I only buy my games from 12.01 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. If there's anything that goes on in those two minutes, well, I have no f***ing clue what could be. How do you prove you love video games? With a lawn chair and an open schedule. The launch of a hotly anticipated game is a magical thing. There's really nothing else like it. Just tapping your foot while counting down the days until release, checking out any and all footage in existence, reading all the articles, and then the day before launch. That is what we call the 10th level of hell. Like, just give me the damn game. But nope, instead we have to wait all the way until the clock strikes midnight, and then we can have no sex. The first game I ever got on release day was none other than Super Mario 3D World back in 2013, because I'm like, what, 12? I don't know, I just never felt the need to buy a game the moment it was available to the masses before that fateful day on November 22nd, and even then, the way I bought the game was through one of the lamest methods possible. Ordering the game online, yeah sure, if you spring for some good quick shipping, you'll get it the day of release, but normally in my experiences, the package gets dropped off at like, 4 p.m. That's half the day wasted where I wasn't playing the game. What was I supposed to be doing when the clock struck midnight and the release day came? Of course, now we have the luxury of pre-purchasing digital games. If you want the game the second the release day approaches, you'll probably want to pick the game up digitally because it'll unlock when the game's available. Except when I bought Smash Brothers Ultimate digitally, for some reason it just refused to open until like 12.15. But that feeling of finally getting to play a game after it unlocks on your console. It does nothing for me. I need a much more interesting way to buy my game the second it comes out, and there's definitely a way to do that. What do you think this is? Waiting for an excruciating amount of time and possibly some of the worst conditions imaginable, all for something you have no idea if it's worth it or not. A pregnancy! The midnight launch event. Yes, this is something every self-respecting video game fan has to do at some point. The human race has done some crazy things, man. This guy stepped foot on the moon and this guy stood in line for the Kinect. Now what's the point of camping out for a midnight release? There is none. Well, in a world with digital games that unlock at midnight, and a November in Ohio that has this much snow, a waiting in line at a store late at night isn't the most appealing. The ones I have vivid memories of, of other people having vivid memories of, were definitely the Wii and PlayStation 3 launches. This was back when it wasn't as easy to just pre-order a console online, you truly did have to arrive at a store hours in advance and loiter. See, I think that's why the launch titles available for a console haven't been as great in recent years, because back then, being there for the midnight release was almost mandatory if you wanted to have the system at launch. So they better have some killer games to go alongside them to make it worth it. Now, just buy it on Amazon. Here's Killzone Shadowfall, you f***ing idiot. But with the Wii Man that had to launch with Wii Sports and Excite Truck and Twilight Princess, could you imagine waiting outside that long for something not Barnyard? Now, midnight releases are normally reserved for the big boy games. Games that would draw a big crowd. Games that you could put on your resume for waiting for. So Call of Duty. I love Call of Duty midnight launches. Actually, this is a doctored photo. This is from the midnight after Modern Warfare 3's launch. I've never intentionally dabbled in midnight releases for games before. I usually just go to the store after waking up in the morning. Which is weird, because I do midnight releases for pretty much everything else in my life. Well, the night is young. It's 2019. There's gotta be some games coming out this year. The problem is, it's 2019. Alright, so tonight, Pokemon Sword and Shield and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order release. Now, I could wait for another midnight release to go to this year. Tonight it is. Now, if I was a Star Wars fan, I could imagine how that midnight release would go. Whoa. It's obvious the game that people are going to be lining up for at midnight is Pokemon. Maybe. It's hard to find out which stores are doing midnight releases and which aren't. A lot of them don't make it blatantly obvious they're doing it. GameStop is probably the surest bet for a midnight launch. I mean, it's GameStop. What else are they doing? But apparently some Best Buys are opening up at midnight to sell the game early. That's f***ing great. I needed some ink anyways. Now, these stores are doing midnight releases. After closing at 9 p.m., I am sorry, Best Buy and GameStop employees. There is always Walmart, which is generally open 24-7, which means the midnight release there consists of me pretending to try on shoes and then booking it to the game section at midnight. But of course, there are the specialty shops, the Nintendo NY store. You bet they're doing a midnight release for Pokemon. Now, Star Wars, that's tricky. I could not find a single store doing a midnight launch for Jedi Fallen Order, and I don't want to miss out on experiencing the digital midnight launch just to experience the physical one. So here we go, I will pre-order the digital version. This is the greatest f***ing pleasure. Well, it seems that Best Buy is doing a midnight launch for Pokemon, so it looks like I'll be showing up to that, but Walmart should have the game at midnight as well, and then who knows, maybe GameStop will be doing a midnight release as well. All right, well, I just got off of the phone with GameStop. They will be doing a midnight release for Pokemon, but they will be doing an early 9 p.m. release for Star Wars. This wasn't fun. Sure, I have the game before midnight, but that's cheating. I want to dig my hands in deep here. I want to get dirty with a true midnight launch. So we're gonna have to buy Pokemon, but first, we have to prepare. 
A midnight release in November is something nightmares are made of, which is why it's time to raid the camping supply section at Walmart. You've no doubt seen the type of people who will camp out just for a console launch, a video game release, and Jesus, how about Black Friday every single year? It's something that really makes you ask Nintendo, I'm getting hypothermia, can you just release the Wii U now? No. All right, we got a lawn chair for eating food rations, and we got a sleeping bag to store food rations, and we have food rations for eating food rations. If I run out of food rations, I have fishing maps just in case, you know. If I got a fish, I got a fish. I have an emergency snake bite kit. It's a Pokemon launch. Water pouch, I am strictly anti-dehydration. Got bug spray. It's gonna be outside. Camouflage so I can sneak in front of the line without anybody noticing. I was gonna buy snow pants, but I decided to only buy things I would realistically use. Some people camp out for days ahead of time just to be the first in line, and I've always dreamed of being one of those people. What the f is this? Well, in that case, I gotta get rolling. So here we are at Best Buy for the launch of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Where's my bug spray? We're back at Best Buy with bug spray in tow and no camouflage hat. One hour from launch and we have everything. I forgot the snake bite kit. I hope the bug spray repels the snakes. After experiencing a true midnight launch for the first time, I've got to admit, this blows. Most of my food rations require a heat source. I thought I could just eat beef stew and run. And November in Ohio, huh? <laughs> Everything's frozen. My legs, my ears, my aspirations. I can't even fish. While we're leaving Best Buy for now, we got 30 minutes until midnight, we're gonna check out how GameStop's doing. Don't worry, I saved my spot with my hat. A camo hat on a lawn chair is a hard sign to stay away. So we're back at the GameStop, I bought my copy of Jedi Fallen Order at, and... This is... this is a much bigger party. Look at this, they got a nice sign and people are lining up for pre-orders. I better get back to Best Buy though. What the hell?! I thought the hat was guarding everything. Oh, <laughs> It was camo, nobody could see it, that's right. GameStop may have had a bigger turnout, but Best Buy's where the true midnight launch experience is at. Oh, it's midnight. Yeah, this one wasn't doing the launch. Okay, back to GameStop, where I was supposed to pre-order the game before waiting in line. F I bought a balance board instead. I bought it at Walmart at 1.03 a.m. Here's my mugshot to prove it. All right, and coming back, I can now experience the midnight launch of the digital versions of these games at 1.30 a.m. This is a bad night to wear flip-flops. Wait, I don't even like Pokemon. And that's what you call wasting $240 in four hours on two games I didn't really care about. However, I think I get it now. The midnight launch isn't necessarily about getting the game as quickly as possible. It's about the experience, being there with others, waiting for the game to come out. They're just as excited as you are, and having that sense of community means a lot. But if you decide to rough it out for days on end, it makes it more of an adventure. It gives you more of a story to tell. I will never do this ever again, but rushing home to finally pop in the game and play it for hours on end until the break of dawn, that's an experience you can't get often, and when it happens, you may be sleep deprived, but it's the memorable kind of sleep deprivation. But easily, my biggest takeaway is... This beef's doing that bad.